All right, and we are back, and there he is, Rudy of Ohio State, Mike Wargo. Guys, how you doing? <laughs> doing good, Mike. How are you doing tonight in beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Doing phenomenal. It's cold, but it's a beautiful night. I actually did some walking today and uh, and still breathing, man, so I'm feeling great. Good for you. Good for you. Hey, man, we first off, thank you so much for being our first ever guest on our live show. We couldn't think of anybody we wanted to be number one than you, my friend. You have been such a great supporter of our podcast, uh, having us come over to Pittsburgh two years now to, to do a show for the Pittsburgh Alumni, Ohio State Alumni Association of Pittsburgh. That's been a just a treat, man. It's been a lot of fun. So we, we want to thank you publicly for that. And thank you as well. Right back at you, you guys. We really appreciate you coming uh, coming out all that way to Pittsburgh uh, for our game watches. Uh, really, uh, with the Marietta event last year, uh, they all were ecstatic. You guys came out, and uh, it was for a great call. So thank you as well. Oh, absolutely. You're welcome. And I tell you, we're looking forward to, to going back next year. We've already talked about that. Uh, we are ecstatic about that. I think there's going to be a group of, uh, of crazy Buckeyes heading over there to PA to, to party with you, man. It, it, it was a lot of fun. You can have a great time. That was a fun night. It was, it was great. All right. Um, so let, let me do this before, before we dive into this, I know you and I talked about this the other night, Mike, I want everybody, first off, if you're watching this from Pennsylvania or you watch the uh, live, or if you watch this on replay on YouTube, if you watch the video, Mike, Who's the official podcast of the Alumni Association of Pittsburgh? The OHIO podcast is the official podcast of the Ohio of the Pittsburgh Alumni Association. <laughs> there we go. I love it, man. That is that is so awesome, dude. It's so great. Okay. So for those who don't know you, Mr. Wargo, and by the way, Larry Daniels, he's the first one to welcome you to the live show. Thank you, Larry Daniels, for welcoming Mr. Mike Wargo. Um, there you go. Um, so for those who don't know you, Mike, why are you known as the Rudy of Ohio State football? Okay, well, uh, a long, long time ago, uh, about uh, uh, over 30 years ago, I was in high school. And uh, I was never, you know, your superstar athlete. I was the guy that always was uh, the last in gym class. You know, you ever go in a gym class in like third grade and they're picking teams and nobody wants you? That was me. So, you know, I was, I was the fat kid growing up and uh, I finally started playing football in junior high. Got my butt kicked every single day. My dad would never let me quit. God rest his soul. Uh, you know, great guy. He never let me quit. I wanted to quit my first year. What did I get myself into? And every single year, I just I felt a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And then uh, in Ohio, I moved from Philadelphia area to Ohio. And my senior year, I finally earned a starting spot at uh, right offensive tackle. And I was feeling really good about myself. I'm like, I actually started on varsity. I had a great year. And then I was always thought about college football. Um, I grew up and, you know, don't hold this against me was a Penn State fan. Obviously, uh, I saw the light uh, on that, but I was a Penn State fan. And then my dad said, hey, we got a job in Cleveland. I got a job in Cleveland. We're moving out to Ohio. So I moved out to a town called Hudson, Ohio. And uh, my senior year, uh, I just, I wanted to play Division One football, man. You know, I went to the Penn State games, how cool that was. And uh, some, some smaller schools were interested in me. And I just said, you know what? I want to play for, for a bigger school. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really know much about Ohio State. I got invited uh, just on a track meet by happenstance. Uh, the guy that was the, the starting shot putter uh, wasn't on a team anymore. So I went to this track meet at Ohio State, got invited to an indoor track meet. I know I, you apply to Ohio State because if you're in Ohio, you just apply to Ohio State. I didn't think much of it. <coughs> I went to the track meet, totally fell in love with the place. So incredible. You know, we're driving by the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. And then I'm, I'm walking around the campus. I see Ohio Stadium. And then I saw that. I said, you know what? Place, like You only live one time. Whatever it takes, I want to try to run out on that field. So my plans totally changed. I was going to play Division Three. come back. I get accepted to Ohio State uh, that Monday. And I just told everybody, man, I want to play for Ohio State. And people thought I was crazy. 
you know, they thought uh, I got hit in the head too many times or what have you. So uh, I made it down on campus, um, figured out, tried to figure out how do you make it as a non-recruiter walk on uh, just your average Joe student on the Ohio State football team. So uh, I asked around. The way they did it back then is you had to try out for their winter conditioning program. Now, I'm a kid right now that, you know, my senior year was like 1989, 1990. I didn't play football. And then January 91 is when I tried out for the football team for the first time. Didn't do that much conditioning. So uh, I tried out for winter conditioning, embarrassed myself. You know, wasn't even selected, not even close to being selected to go on. Kind of forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm never going to make the team or whatever. Had fun on high street. Enjoyed being a student. And in springtime, they had a practice in the stadium. I lived in Moral Tower, which is right next to Ohio Stadium. Saw them practicing, and that sparked it again that I wanted to try out. So I just uh, I just smiled and dialed. I called uh, the football office, and uh, a guy named Bill Conley, great guy. He was a recruiting coordinator at the time. He played for the Buckeyes in the early 70s. He said, come on down and, uh, and and talk to me. So I went to visit him in the spring, and I told him, I said, you know, I tried out the first time, and I didn't make it. And he said, you know what? He goes, work your ass off, do a lot of running, come on down, give me a call August 1st, and we'll set up another tryout for you. So, you know, I was working at SeaWorld of Ohio. All I did was I did some running at night, not really conditioning, not really understanding what you have to do to be a Buckeye football player. And I went down, and I tried out, ran like a 40-time. And I'm like, yeah, you know, this is over. They're never going to pick me. I'm at peace with it. I did the best I could. I called him the next day. He was like, uh, you know, what's your social security number? And, uh, you know, I'm trying to wonder why does this guy want my social security number if he's not going to let me on a team? And then he gave me this big pep talk. I'm going to run an academic check, but don't waste my time. If you're going to quit the first date, don't waste my time. And you want to come down here, uh, you know, give it a shot. And I'm, I'm starting to shake, I, you know. I, I was just told I made the Ohio State football team. So I go down. Um, at this point, I arrive uh, on a team. This is August of 91. Uh, the night before, I'm terrified. Like, what am I getting myself into here? I haven't played football in two years. I see those guys coming in. You know, there was a, a big part of me that just wanted to just drive home. But, uh, you know, somehow I made it through the practices. I got knocked around a lot. My first year was the roughest. I was out of shape. They never gave up on me. Uh, you know, they kept working with me, and I came back, and I just kept working harder and harder, and then the rest of it was from there. So I'm very lucky and honored to be an Ohio State Buckeye. That is awesome, man. It's such a uh, – this is – I've heard this story from you multiple times now, and every time I get goosebumps, dude. It's so canny how – your story lines up with the Rudy movie and the story. It, it's just, it's crazy how similar it is. Now, uh, those of you who have not seen the um, article or the, the news article on Channel 4 that was ran of Mike and some of his on uh, teammates that were walk-ons, uh, we posted that. I think it was last night or this morning, one of the two. We posted it on our Facebook page. Go check that out. Uh, I was able to t find a clip of that. I think you posted on YouTube years ago, Mike. I, is what when I, we first met, yeah, when we first met. Yeah, I grabbed that, and and, and I, I wanted to share that with all of you. Um, it's pretty cool to, to watch that, but I've got a treat, man. Uh, by the way, uh, Ryan says, awesome story, dude. And Ryan, don't you worry. We are going to make sure that you get hooked up with this guy for your tailgate. Oh, man. Eric, uh, are we sure that's a good idea? Let like these two guys party together? When <laughs> it's like it's like Jupiter and Saturn just collide, and that, that tailgate, I'm just going to. We have got to be there for that one. I'm just there to document it, okay? Right. <laughs> I'll just be there to document it. That, that'll be a good time. That'll be a great time. Um, anyways, so that being said, I've got a treat. So so we're going to show all of you the Rudy moment in just a second. We've got a clip of the moment that Wargo became Rudy and got on the field. And there's a joke that Rudy was offsides. Did you false start a little bit there? I was so excited. I mean... <laughs> 
No, I'll, 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 if you guys want to play it first, I'll give a description of what I went through. I could do that first. I mean, uh... well, what what we'll do is let's do this. Okay, we're we're gonna show the clip in just a second. There's no audio on it. I took the audio off because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of weird rules when you're on video, especially live. So I took the audio off. This is just a, a video clip, but maybe you can set this up for us because the video clip starts the down before you, oh, hit, yeah. you hit the field. So tell everybody what's going on. Okay, so uh, when I was a walk-on, when I made the team, um, I didn't play my first year, didn't play my second year, and then my third year – it was looking like I was never, ever going to get in. You know, uh, I, I almost played against Northwestern. So, I, you know, I was really thinking at that point of quitting the program. I'm like, well, I'm, I know that's horrible to say, but, uh, you know, it's just it was hard to stay up for it. And then uh, an article came out, like in practice, I just one day, somebody from the dispatch wanted to talk to me. One of the greatest things that's ever happened in my life is this Rudy movie. Because what happened was that movie came out in like September, early October. Uh, in my locker room, in the locker room, uh, I got a, a re interview request from the dispatch. I thought the guys were playing a prank on me, like who would want to talk to me? Must be a really slow news day. So a guy from the dispatch talked to me. And he basically was like, why do you do this? You know, you come out here all the time. You're colliding with, uh, you know, Dan Wilkinson. If you remember, I pretty much had to go up against him every single day. Big daddy. 94 draft. You can go right down the list. I mean, all those guys were just... They were just mostly future NFL stars. And I just said, you know what? It's so cool to be a Buckeye. And that, that reminded me of why I was doing this. It's an honor to, to run out on that field every single day. How many people ever get a chance to do that? You know, there's like 100 players on the team. There's probably, you know, 30,000 guys on campus. And I just thought it was awesome. And Coach Cooper must have been reading that. And I got to give the guy a lot of credit. He actually read the <laughs> – I didn't know if he actually read the paper <laughs> – and somebody told him about that, about the story. And I was really positive. I was very positive about the program. I'm like, I'm honored to be here. I do think one day I'll get a chance to play. And he either read that or somebody told him about it. Penn State was that week. And, you know, I mean, Penn State, I figured if I was ever going to play, it's going to be against, like, Northwestern, against, like, you know, Youngstown State or wherever we were playing, like, a really small squad. That's the only chance I was ever going to get to play. So if you would have told me I would have gotten in that game, you know, I think I would have had a better chance of hitting the Powerball. So I'm totally off guard. Um, the game's winding down. All of a sudden, everybody's screaming, Wargo, 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 Wargo. And I'm, I'm, why is everybody screaming my name? And Coach Cooper goes, you know, Wargo, get up here. And I'm like, the coach wants to talk to me. And he goes, I hear you weren't in the game yet, and we're going to change that right now. And my heart's like, can you imagine this moment? This is like a nationally televised game. It was yeah. the first time we played against Penn State since they re-entered the Big Ten. Yep. I just had the realization that I'm going to have to go into the football game. This is like I'm from the Philadelphia area, Ohio. Everybody I know, relatives, family, are probably watching this game on TV. You had the big guys, Keith Jackson, Bob Grise, they were the legends of that time, doing the game. So, like, I'm starting to shake. I'm just, you know, when you're just trying to come to terms with something crazy is about to happen. And then I just remember Cooper pointing in the game. I had to calm down, and I just, I kind of just went into this zone. I said, okay, well, it's Penn State's defense. You go up against Ohio State's first-team defense every single day in practice. You've been doing it for three years. How much worse could this possibly be than when I go up against every single day? That doesn't mean I was going to do good, but I went into it, and then I lined up at right guard. And then, uh, you know, what you'll see in a second, I got, I hit two guys. Thank God I didn't jump off sides. And there's some <laughs> kind of nightmares that that happened. Like if there's a back to the future, but, you know, he's going to jump off sides and this isn't going to happen, you know. But uh, thank God the ref must have just been like, yeah, it's the last play who cares. So uh, it, it was, I did, I went in motion. I didn't really jump off sides. And then, you know, thank God, like, you know, the plays, I knew what to do. Like, you know, you, when you're on scout team, you're just studying off of cards of the plays of the opposing offense. You know, you're mimicking them. I'm like, all right, this was a right 22. I think it was a fullback ISO or whatever, right 22. And I know, okay, this guy's lining up in the, in the technique. And I'm going to – and it's just for whatever reason, everything worked perfectly, except for almost jumping off sides. I blocked two guys. I had 100% blocking grade. So the coach said, you, you had 100% blocking grade. So I left Ohio State with 100% blocking grade. And it was just an incredible experience. Oh, that is awesome. All right, we're going to show you the video. And I think –
How was your trip to Atlanta? Obviously, the outcome of the game didn't go great, but how was your trip to I the Peach Bowl? Absolutely incredible time. I went down, like, yeah, I always stayed at the Atlanta airport, never actually went into the into the city. So I went down, um, hung out with a high school buddy, ran into a lot of guys that we tailgate. So um, just got to, got to drink a whole half yard of beer, which is like that big. Um, the Bray Stadium is beautiful and went down. Uh, they had uh, the Fun Fest, the Fan Fest or whatever, and it was good. The game, obviously the game, you couldn't ask for – anything more as far as effort wise from the Buckeyes it was absolutely incredible. We had the best team in college football on the ropes until the last second. I mean, let's face facts. I don't, I don't think they ever led during that game, Georgia. Um, you know, but what I honestly, what I felt like, and I, you know, it's nobody, no one person's to blame. It's just the way things work out. You know, I think to win a national championship, you got to have a little bit of luck go your way. Sure. But I felt like I won that mega millions. And then I dropped a ticket and somebody else got it. That's oh. Oh. Um, but I can't, I, I had an incredible time. I wasn't upset. I mean, I was sad when the field goal kick was missed, but, but, you know, everybody expected us and you know, it. I mean, how many guys are like, we shouldn't even go. We're going to get pushed around. We're going to get embarrassed. That flat out did not happen. Right. And, uh, oh. it, it, what are you going to say? I mean, it, it, that should be our national championship. That, I, I'm going to say what everybody feels. I, I got to tell you, Eric, I have got a ton of Ohio State fans who are on my Facebook page. And this is not a lie. I must have had a hundred different people post about a thousand different pictures. And I swear to you that Mike Wargo was in every single one of them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know if he knew all these people. They were, it just seemed like he was there in every single picture I saw the entire day following the, the national championship game. Yeah, we had a blast just meeting with people down there. I mean, like our tailgate group. And, I, I, and embarrassingly, I haven't, I didn't get to go to an Ohio State home game this year. I just had a lot of things going on uh, with my life. So I got, I had to go to the bowl game. Yeah. And uh, it was just great to see all those guys and, 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 and just take pictures. And I got to see the places in Atlanta. So it was just an incredible time until the very end. But what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. All right, here's a couple questions. Let's start with Larry uh, Larry Daniel's question for you here, Mike. He says, what was the conditioning like at that time? What was your height, weight back then, and who did you hang out with? Those are good um, questions. Great questions. Uh, I was, well, I'm, I guess I'm 6'1", 6'2". That didn't change. Uh, I wish I was at this weight again. I was 270. <laughs> I, I'd love to be there again, <laughs> maybe one day. But I was 270, and uh, the conditioning coach was a, a guy named Dave Kennedy, and he was a very respected strength and conditioning coach. Um, he moved on to to being in the pros. I, I think he might have retired now. But, um, uh, for example, our conditioning tests, uh, what we would do for conditioning. So back then, and I can't imagine what they go through now, but back then um, there was summer conditioning. The NCAA back then couldn't force you to stay um, in the summertime. But guess what? If you didn't stay, you really didn't have a shot to play, right? So right. it was the unwritten rule. You had to do it. And uh, we would start off with like two-mile runs. I, I hate long-distance running. Hated it back then. And then we would go to every single week, we would go to like uh, 10, 200 yards, uh, go like touch the, touch the goal line and come back. And then uh, we would work up to doing, and this was like we knew we were getting ready for the test. The last week of conditioning, we do 26 110-yard sprints. So if you could do that, we get a break at 10, we get a break at 17. The lineman had to make it in under 18 seconds for each 100-yard sprints. And then your conditioning tests, what we did back then was we had to run four gassers. Now, gassers are you get on the, the sideline, and then you run, you touch the down back. It's like a shuttle run. Right. You go down back, down back. The lineman had to do it in under 40 seconds. You had one-minute rest. And then you had to make four of those in your times. And the guys that weren't doing the conditioning, you know, they would fall fall on their face and everything. And then if you did make that, life became a lot more miserable because you would be with what's called dawn patrol. And so before doing all your two-a-days and everything you have to do, which you're drained enough, you have to you have to do that conditioning test every single day until you make it. So that's basically what we did. Um, the winter conditioning was the toughest. So basically the season would end. And then we would do what's called winter conditioning. And that was we would have to wake up at 6 in the morning. We would have stations. The stations would start off at three minutes, and they would go to five minutes. That doesn't sound like a lot, but for three minutes, like one of them, you're pushing a two-by-four on the AstroTurf field. 
Uh, the second one, maybe you're, you're, you're pulling slight, you're doing all kinds of different things. Um, our defensive coordinator at the time, you did not want to upset him. You, his station, you had to do it just right or you had to keep going. So I, the winter conditioning is what I detested the most. That was uh, the most difficult thing. Yeah. All right. Good questions there. Uh, who did you hang out with? Who did I hang out with? Just, uh, you know, I, I just had, I was friends with pretty much everybody on the team. Um, you know, we get together, uh, you know, mainly walk-ons. A lot of times hung out with other walk-ons kind of like because we were in the same group. But we'd have uh, we'd have parties and everything, and, and those guys were there. I mean, I wasn't really close friends with the famous guys, but you know, sometimes we would we would hang out. I really hung out basically with people more in my shoes, um, you know, as far as that goes. So, okay, all right, here's one for you. Uh, this one is from Ryan. Uh, how did the other players treat you on the team? You know, uh, as far as treating you. So, so if you remember, like. Rudy in the movie Rudy, man, he gets pretty much dogged until he earns their respect. Yes. How did how did the players treat you? Uh, when it first started, um, basically ninety nine percent of them treated me awesomely. Um, my first year was the toughest because I wasn't in very good shape and I had trouble making my conditioning times and stuff. I had like a two year layoff. Imagine not playing football for two years and then trying to play for Ohio State. That's what I was going through. But you know, I never quit. There were times I wanted to walk away and I got embarrassed and stuff and I came back the next day. And, uh, you know, that respect uh, really just started to grow. There were like any kind of a team situation or a couple guys that kind of were like, you know, bullies. But, you know, you got respect. You, I came back every single day, blocked. Um, you know, I, I think I got respect for that. And if you look at that video, my favorite part of that video really isn't the play itself. It's when you go in, I got four or five guys that were starters on Ohio State gave me hugs when I came onto that field in that one video. So like guys, unfortunately, one was Jason Winrow. He was a starting guard and he's not with us anymore. He passed away in 2012. Um, you know, DJ Jones and, uh, I went in for a guy named Rod Smith, great guy. And, uh, you know, I love the camaraderie. So by the second and third year, they were just awesome. They're great players. It's nice seeing them. When you see them, if you go to an Ohio state game or something, it's just like, you know, you pick up where you left off. So they treated me 99% awesomely. Chris, get a question ready. I'm uh, uh, here. So, so I got I got to know, Wargo. After this is all done, this has all happened, and mm -hmm. everything at the time. Did you ever, in your wildest mind, think that all these years later, almost twenty years later, actually thirty years later, if I do my math right here, yeah. Mm -hmm almost 30 years later that you would be sitting here on a podcast <laughs> talking no. about this one moment, no. this one moment where, where and, and it has brought so many people joy like this. It's to me, it's, it's so much the Rudy story that you, you know, you said it, you said it earlier, you know, you owed a lot of gratitude to the movie Rudy because it really has been a big part of your life. I never saw the field. I mean, let's face facts. And, and for whatever reason, I, it, I think it's just, and, and, and you know, the thing I don't want to do, there's so many other walk-ons that are exactly the same as me. And for whatever reason, I get this attention, but there's so many other guys that played. And my goal, honestly, I mean, my goal wasn't to be the Rudy of Ohio State. My goal was to start. My goal was, you know, I mean, when you're 22, you have these crazy dreams. And I had that one play. I'm thinking, all right, this is going to be a start to something great. My goal was to do that. But I love being a Rudy of Ohio State. It's so cool. I love that movie. It's the best I could possibly do. And no, I mean, for many years after that happened in the 90s, you know, nobody even knew. I think with the advent of social media and me just posting some memories of, of, of uh, the football team and everything just grew into that. So it's really incredible, and I'm just so honored. And I'm honored that you guys uh, I, I always have me on your show, and it's just I love doing it every single time. Chris, fire away. All right, Mike, you you played for Coach Cooper. Yes. Now, Co Coach Cooper, you know, catches a lot of criticism from a lot of Ohio State fans, but certainly does. Just, just co comes off as just a super super nice guy. He is. So, what is your favorite Coach Cooper story? My favorite coach, well, obviously, that's my favorite one where you get, Wargo, get in the game, because, uh, you know, and, and when you're outside of that, I, I know there's got to be something that th this guy did that was, 
just a little off the wall or off the beaten path. That <laughs> I'm trying to think when you're a walk on, obviously um, nobody. And this is what's tough when you're like a walk on. The coaches like they won't even acknowledge you. Like I, I, my locker was across from Bobby Hoying. Hey, Bobby, how's it going? You having a good day? Hey, you going? And I'm like, hey, coach, and they would just look and walk away. And uh, <laughs> we, I tested him one time. He had a call-in show, and I just wanted to know if he knew I existed. So you know, it's not like the fancy podcast is like you called. It. His show was Thursday night, so I had my my roommate call in. You know, I was wondering about Mike Wargo, and he's like, Mike Wargo's an offensive line. He, like, knew everything about me. And I don't think, like, he was I – mean, he, he knew. And I was just really impressed about that. I'm like, the guy, because he, you know, he – and then finally, like, the second or third, he was like, hey, Wargo, how you doing? But, you know, when you're first-year walk-on, man, you are just an invisible person. And I thought that was really awesome. Um, the thing I loved about him is he was just an incredibly tough person. Um, I'll give you one. Uh when we lost it, this was 1992. And we started off and we had a great start. We played Louisville. We beat them. It was a close one, but we beat Louisville. I was at that game. I was actually okay. at that Louisville game. Yeah. 1992. We beat Bowling Green. And then we lost to Syracuse the year before in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Mm-hmm. So this was, we had to go to the Carrier Dome. I guess that's where they played then, if I remember right. We had to go to the Carrier Dome and we just beat the hell out of them. We had a great game. Like we were moving up in the rankings and everything. And then um, we lost to Wisconsin and then we lost to Illinois. That was just a, that was a disaster of a game. And I just remember Cooper talking to us and he goes, you know, guys, you got to stick together. You got to bound around. He goes, you know, they're going to be coming for me. And some guy goes in the locker room. And then somebody just screamed in the locker room when he did that. But the guy was just incredibly tough. He was a super nice guy. Um, you know, he's a guy that that, that did really care. Um, another one, one, one Coop, Coach Cooper memory, and I really appreciate it now, is how my career ended is my kneecap dislocated in spring practice my senior year. And, you know, when you get in that game, obviously it's intoxicating. I wanted to do anything to play again, but I just – I, I either had to have surgery or it was over. So I tried to I tried to play football without the surgery. And he came up to me during the physical and he's like, look, you know, he goes, if I wanted to make dog meat out of you, I could have you go out there, but you could be crippled for life. You know, if I was your father, I'd say you got to hang it up. And I, I felt horrible at that time. But looking back on it, looking back on it, you know, that was really a good thing to do. Because, yeah, you know, I don't I, I couldn't be on the team anymore because I would have really gotten messed up if I would have tried to practice with that. And and my biggest regret is he offered me a student coaching, like internship position, but I was so upset. I couldn't be on the team anymore. I just, I left the team and that was my biggest regret I ever had. I'd give anything to go back. I would, I would have been like a student assistant and look at what these coaches make today. So, you know, maybe would have led to something, but that was my biggest regret, but I really appreciated that. He's a great man. Um, I wish people would judge him more by what his Michigan record is because, in my opinion, he did an awful lot. He did an awful lot. He grew the program from – with Earl Bruce, there wasn't that many athletes uh, at the end of the Earl Bruce and not, not taking a shot at Earl Bruce, just what I've always been told. He got the expert athletes. He was a hell of a recruiter. And let's face facts, a couple of those games, there was no college football playoff. I'm not going to go back and rewrite history, should have, would have, could have. But in 2014 – we had a horrible loss against Virginia Tech, and we went on to win the championship. And, uh, you know, that was – you know, nobody really goes undefeated, it seems, anymore in football. It's really hard to do. So, you know, he's done a great job, and uh, he's just a great guy. But, yes, not going to make excuses. The Michigan record is horrible, and the bowl record was not that good either. But you know what, Mike? I've had that – made that same argument before that if, if Cooper would have been coaching in a playoff era – yeah, I think he's got a minimum of two national titles. Uh, I think it's very, very close. I mean, the one that stings the most is 1993. We won the Big Ten. Uh, we won the Big Ten, and we were undefeated. And we just we laid an egg against Michigan. We lost 28 to nothing. And, you know, here's another Michigan back then was kind of like the Michigan in the last couple of years. Um, I think you have to weigh that in a little bit with that rivalry. Not taken away from Jim Trussell, not taken away from Urban, but I think the Michigan teams, like in the early 2010s, kind of were very weak compared to the Michigan teams. <laughs> no excuse, Ohio State, you got to beat Michigan. Period. 
Uh, Tom, uh, Tom here says, and thanks for listening and watching, Tom. Appreciate that. Your jersey number was 70, but what was your original uh, number when you got to Ohio State? I was 57. So um, I was number 57. So basically when you're a walk-on, you're a double number. And um, yeah, obviously there's over 100 kids on the team, so that, that I double numbered. Um, and then finally, like, they'll give you your own number. So I was 70. I like to talk about Tom Heppelfinger. Um, he was a walk-on under the Jim Trestle era. And he's actually writing a book about walk-ons. And he asked me to, uh, to, uh, to be in his book as far as to represent the 90s. And he's also, uh, I think he's on a coaching staff for Tennessee State under Eddie George. That's a guy you guys might want to talk to sometime. He's been a friend of mine for over 10 years, just pure determination. So, Tom, thanks for asking that question. Tom? Hook me up, brother. We want to talk to you, my man. Absolutely. He has a, an extremely inspiring story as well. Very, very cool. Very cool. Thanks for thanks for that question, Tom, and we will be in touch, my friend. All right, we're we're actually after 9 o'clock. It's that time we got to start wrapping this thing up, man. Hey, I appreciate you coming on the show, Mike Wargo. It's been awesome. And I got one more we need to throw out here. Let me see if I can find this comment. I would, I, I would be remiss if I did not. Um, here we go. Here you go, Ryan. Hope to get to meet you at my tailgate next season, Ryan said. So. I'm in. I'm going to hit more games. I might hit the spring game. Do you guys know when a spring game is this year? No. I think it's been probably about mid to late April, so yeah. hopefully I'll see everybody there. And uh, we'll do some tailgating and have some fun, and uh, my schedule should be a little more cleared up this year, so I'll get some more home games. Beautiful. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, we'll we'll make that happen, Ryan. We'll see if we uh, we'll see if we can't get Wargo down to your tailgate, man. All right, guys. Uh, oh, here, one more, one more. We got to get Lenny in here. Good stuff. Lenny Zabo says good stuff, so Thanks. we appreciate that. Uh, the he's a the Billy Bob backyard barbecue, you know that one, don't you? Yeah. So, um, all right, guys, that's our show for this week, man. Hey, this has I, been a lot I of fun. One minute? Can I can I take thirty seconds? All yours. Go yeah. for it, Mike. We all yours. Buckeye pep band. Okay, so we're all disappointed. You know, I'm still kind of in mourning, but I'm going to play a song, and then we're officially going to move on. It's going to be a new year. We have a Pittsburgh Buckeye pep band. <laughs> Next time you come out, and it's me on trumpets, but we're going to play this song. It might not be perfect, but we're going to move on from this last season. I'm going to play this. <laughs> My neighbors are calling the cops. <laughs> Go, Bucks. Go Bucks. All right. That was awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. Hey, we got to do this because I know it's, I know it's, Wargo does this. We got to do this. OH! IO! In Michigan! Sucks! <laughs> there you go, guys. Uh, have a great time. We'll see you All next right. Sunday. Next Sunday, we will be back at 8 o'clock. Thank you so much, Mike. Until Happy next time, uh, OHIO, go Bucks. Be kind to one another. Take care, everybody. Take care.